Good morning. I'm Bill Brown, pastor of Ruffner Memorial Presbyterian Church. I wish there was good news about the COVID-19 pandemic, but there isn't. Wednesday of last week, the death count in the United States passed 100,000. To put that into context, it would be like the city of Rochester, New York, or Flint, Michigan, being completely devoid of people. These deaths have taken place in a three-month period, but people are still being infected and dying. There was a call last week that churches be reopened as essential services. Churches are essential, but until it is safe to meet together in person, we will continue to do so connected by God's Spirit. After all, whose life is expendable? We all watched this week as people returned to beaches and pools and businesses cheek to cheek without any thought of social distancing or wearing masks. I must conclude that people here in the Canola Valley are no better. Walmart and Kroger have aisles that are clearly marked one way, but people ignore the one-way signs. Either they can't read or they don't care. Obviously, a lot of people don't care about others. They don't practice social distancing. They don't wear masks. And while my masks may not help us, they may not keep us from infection. They might keep us from infecting others. When Jesus was asked what a man must do to receive eternal life, he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and, and with all your strength and with all your mind. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. No other commandment is greater than these, Jesus said. He tells us that loving God and our neighbors is the highest commandment. But there are those who don't care. They don't care what Jesus says because they want their personal freedom. That means more to them than your life or your safety or your loved ones. We continue to meet online and care about the lives of others. We continue to meet connected by God's Holy Spirit. Continue to stay in touch with others. Pray for those in harm's way and do what you can to protect others. Let's pray together. Loving, ever living and compassionate God, you understand the pain and loss, the heartache and of bereavement. May we hold in our hearts all those whose families and friends have died. You are the light that shines in the darkness. Guide us and heal us in our sickness and sorrow. You comfort us in times of fear. May we comfort each other, even as we keep apart. You console and lead us in times of doubt, confusion. May we follow the light of your love and spread hope. You move our hearts to acts of generosity. May we be led to share what we have with those who are in need. God of life, we thank you for the signs of your light in the midst of our darkness. May we be signs of your compassion in the heart 
of your world. We ask this in the name of our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. this morning comes to us from the book of Acts, the second chapter, the first through the 21st verse. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphoria, converts, both Egypt and Egypt and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own language. Amazed and perplexed, they ask one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and addressed the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, 
let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk, as you suppose. It's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see vision. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by mercies, by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you and through him, as you yourselves know. This is the word of the Lord. This is Pentecost Sunday and the liturgical color is red and red represents the Holy Spirit. Pentecost designates the 50th day after Passover. Pentecost is a Jewish feast day known as the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Harvest. It was on this day that the Holy Spirit was poured out on 120 followers of Jesus. It's on this day that Christ's church was born, born in a blaze of glory and a blaze of fire. Experiencing Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit into one's life, it is clearly one of the great experiences of any disciple of Jesus. However, for some, any sermon or discussion about the Holy Spirit seems to create a spirit of anxiety. The idea of God filling a person with his spirit makes them feel a little uneasy. And some people feel uncomfortable discussing anything having to do with the supernatural. It is beyond their capacity to understand and it makes them feel insecure. Some people feel uneasy trying to put into words their feelings about God. It's hard to talk about something one has spent very little time thinking or studying about. For others, such a discussion brings about a feeling of culpability or shame they hear the stories of miracles, of anointings with signs and wonders and question if they are for our time. They wonder if God still manifests his gifts in the 21st century. Can God still heal the sick? And if these miracles are for our time, why don't we witness them more often? And some wonder if it has to do with them at all. Is it something they are missing? My hope for you this day is that you will be inspired to read, learn, and study about God's Holy Spirit. There's no greater experience than having the Holy Spirit present and active in your life. There is no greater comfort than living in the purity, the sanctification, and the justification of our Lord. Living a life in the realization of Pentecost, living a life yielding to the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the life that stands on the truth 
of the Holy Spirit stands on the promise, the purity, and the power of Pentecost. First, Pentecost is a promise of fulfillment. Second, Pentecost is a purity of, of realization. Third, Pentecost is a power possessed. Promise fulfilled, purity realized, power possessed. Most people don't realize, but God's word is filled with passages addressing the person of the Holy Spirit. Did you know that the Holy Spirit was active in the creation of the universe? He was active in the lives of Job, David, Nehemiah, Joseph, and the other prophets. Each of these individuals received an infilling of the Holy Spirit, anointing them for service and giving them special insight. Daniel was renowned as a man full of God's Holy Spirit. The presence of the Holy Spirit is one of the core themes of the prophet, of the prophetic writings of Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Joel. Others like Jeremiah looked to the future with the Spirit, with the Spirit giving them special insights. And if all these examples were not enough, Jesus speaks numerous times to the attributes and work of the Holy Spirit. Jesus tells us plainly that the coming of the Holy Spirit is a part of the Father's plan for the salvation of his people. Hear what Luke tells us. And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. The coming of the Holy Spirit is something that the church was promised by our Heavenly Father. In, pre, in Peter's great sermon in Acts, it's, he says, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off and for all whom the Lord our God will call. This outpouring of the Holy Spirit is not a, a special blessing for a special few at a special age. It's for all. All who have truly repented and believed God's word. It is for all who have found remission of sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. The promise is for you and for your children and for all whom our Lord God will call. What promise, what a promise we have. The real question is not whether as a Christian you have the right to the gift of the Holy Spirit, but whether you have claimed that right. Have you availed yourself of God's gracious promise? Pentecost is a promise from the Father, a part of his plan for your life. Pentecost is a promise of the Father, fulfilled. Pentecost is purity realized. Purity is the center theme of the scriptures. But how does one who is impure approach a holy God. Uncleanliness, impurity, and sin simply can not exist in the presence of a holy God. The Father made a way for, for us, a way to be cleansed and made righteous. 
the Father sent his Son so that all who believe in him for salvation will be saved. He also sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in the hearts and the lives of those who, who look to Jesus for their salvation. He sent his Holy Spirit that we might be progressively transformed into the image of Christ. Pentecost ignites holiness in our lives, in the lives of our families, and in the lives of our community of faith. Pentecost makes regeneration of our hearts, minds, and souls a reality. Pentecost is a promise of the Father fulfilled. Pentecost is purity realized. Pentecost is a power possessed. Through the power of Pentecost, God enables us to walk in the, re in the restoration of the image of Jesus in our lives. God does not leave us to our own devices after we have been redeemed. Instead, God continues to work in our lives. Remember these words, and I am sure of this, that he who began the good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul makes it plain that we are not just saved from, for, from something. That is, we are saved to something. We are saved to Christ, to be a part of the body of Christ. We are justified. We are saved to live as God's holy people. Like a good marriage. The beauty comes from continual day-to-day -day sharing of life with one another. It's the learning, growing, maturing we experience as, as one's spirit is joined with another. It is a life adventure with the one that you promise to love and cherish. The beauty and memories are found in the relationship of two people sharing life together. Our personal Pentecost is more than a specific event. It's a starting point to an even greater life in Jesus Christ. One of the true joys of being part of the faith community is living out our lives with and for one another. God has chosen to dwell in and through his people called the body of Christ. At times that involves growing, giving, transforming, adjusting, and yes, forgiving utilizing the fruit of the Holy Spirit. It is only when we are not obeying the Holy Spirit that the community of faith suffers from bickering and dissension. How many church splits do you know about? I'm sure most of you know of at least a couple. What caused them? People wanting their own way and not God's plan. People willing to divide a church or a denomination to get what they want, regardless of the cost. Yet when we live in the power of the Holy Spirit, we enjoy a life of giving to one another and a life overflowing with joy. This beautiful interaction of a community of believers is called the church, Christ's church. The power of the Holy Spirit is progressively 
bringing about a spirit of unity and harmony. Now we're all human and we know that we won't always be on the same page. So we must ask ourselves this question, will my actions damage Christ's church? We used to see a lot of kids walking around with bracelets on their arms with the letters WWJD on them. WWJD stood for what would Jesus do? Whenever we find ourselves in a church in a situation of contention, maybe we ought to think about these letters, WWJD. What would Jesus do? If someone is wrong, they are wrong. But there are ways of dealing with these sorts of problems that won't damage Christ's church. And if we approach our problems with love, we know the Holy Spirit will be present. The Holy Spirit will be present wherever we ask. The Holy Spirit will be present whenever we ask. One of the memories, one of the great joys of my life was to meet every Thursday morning with a group of men at seven o'clock in the morning before work. We prayed and we talked. There were generally about 20 of us, not always the same men every Thursday. We could bring up anything. We could pray about anything and nothing ever left the group except those prayers to God. We just called it the Thursday morning prayer group. It's amazing the trust and the love which can be developed. We met in the church and the presence of the Holy Spirit was always with us. You could feel the Holy Spirit working his presence in our group. Beloved, there is a great peace, a great joy that always seems to accompany the presence of the Holy Spirit. We are called to yield our giftedness to the will of our Lord. And when the people of God come together, and we will, when we yield to the, the leadership and direction of the Holy Spirit, something beautiful will happen. We are all gifted. We all have been given voices to be used for the God of glory. And when we watch and when we listen, we will meld together as one body. We will join in heart and mind and soul together as one. Each one of us doing and giving our best for our God and for each other. No one wanting to shine brighter, knowing that the music of heaven happens in community. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. That is the power of Pentecost. We must yield to the guidance of the Holy Spirit who abides in your very being. And when we do, it is sacred, it is holy, it is Pentecost. Amen. And now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you both now and forevermore. Be at peace. Amen.